All right, folks, I am going to be testing the lap timer feature from Red Rotor that integrates with the RR OSD to show you your lap times on the OSD while you're flying. But before I do that, I need to upgrade the firmware to version 4.0, which is required in order for the lap timer feature to work. So since I'm going to do that anyway, here's a video on how to upgrade the firmware on your RR OSD. This will be useful, obviously, if you're going to use the lap timer, but it'll also be useful if you have an earlier version, if you were one of the first people to buy it, and you'd like to access to some of the newer features that have been added, like the ability to calibrate the uh, the current reading, the gray background on the text, et cetera, et cetera, and any interesting updates that come in the future. Uh, Red Rotor have been really responsive to requests in the in the thread on RC groups from from users. Uh, for features that they like. So uh, I think we can expect to see this product uh, continue to be developed. Let's get into it. The first thing you're going to need to do is you're going to need to physically connect your ROSD board to your PC so that the software can program it. And in order to do that, you're going to use a device like this, which is a FTDI adapter. Uh, this image is from the Red Rotor manual, so I presume that this is the adapter that Red Rotor sells. But it's not a it's not a proprietary device. It's a standard device, FTDI adapter. It looks like uh, I have a similar thing. It's just a cable with a built-in FTDI chip, and I believe it will, should perform the same function. We're going to find out when I try and make this work. One of the things that we're going to have to deal with, though, is since I'm not using this exact same programmer, I have to translate my pinout to the one in the diagram. So, for example. You can see that I've the TX pin here goes to the black wire on the servo lead, which goes to the leftmost pin on this header. Okay, so then if we look at my diagram, I can see that the TX pin is the orange wire. Okay, and if we look at my diagram, you can see I've taken the orange wire to here with a little jumper wire, and it's going to the the black wire on the servo lead coming from the ROSD. So I've basically just used this diagram, sorry about that, this diagram to figure out what the pinout is on my standard FDDI cable and then translate that over to what we've got here. So here's the RX pin, which is going to the middle red wire on the servo lead, and the RX pin is the yellow wire on my FTDI cable, and so I've, I've connected those together. And then we've got the DTR pin, which on the FTDI adapter here, it's I believe that's the same as the RTS pin. I think that DTR and RTS are the same thing. Again, we're going to find out when this either does or does not work. <laughs> All right. Uh, and then lastly, you need to get ground. Anytime you have two devices that are talking digitally, they need to have a common ground. And uh, this example shows you getting ground from this pin on the VTX but I didn't want to unplug my video transmitter. I don't know, because I'm lazy. The nice thing is that on electrical systems, ground is always common. You can get ground from anywhere. Anywhere there's a ground pad or, or anything that's grounded, it's as good as anything else for ground. That's true for signal level stuff. If you're carrying amps and amps of current, you don't want to just grab ground anywhere because you could burn out something that's not designed to carry that much current. But for signal level stuff, the currents you're dealing with are so small that it really kind of doesn't matter where you get ground from. The only time it would begin to matter would be if you had an opto isolator in the circuit, since the whole point of an opto isolator is to separate the ground of the two circuits. But in general, you're not going to find that on most, most quadcopters. So I actually just cheated and took ground. I took the ground pin of my FTDI adapter. I used an alligator clip to connect it to this uh, barrel, uh, ferrule or whatever on my SMA adapter that is always grounded. And you can check with a multimeter if you're not sure to see that you have continuity between that point and the ground pad on, uh, on your ROSD or any or the, that ground pin that's indicated in the manual. I don't think it should matter where we get ground from. So I've just taken it from a convenient location. And, and again, we'll see if that works. OK, so now I'm going to go ahead and download this zip file and we'll open it up and I need to extract this to let's extract it to my desktop okay it should be extracted to my desktop and now we'll run the installer rloader.msi oh <laughs> dumped it right on my desktop oh well we'll run rloader.msi
fine, fine. And now it sits here for about 30 seconds doing nothing, which I won't make you sit through, but I did want to let you know that if it freezes up and seems to be doing nothing for a while, just wait, it might work for me. And now the Windows security screen has popped up, and so it's not being recorded. I'm having to give permission to install whatever, and I'm doing that. Okay, that seems to have worked. And now we have to restart the system. <laughs> All right, well, I'll pause the recording and come back after we restart. All right, we're back. Windows has done its rebooting and installing. The Red Rotor loader uh, should be ready to go. Uh, and the next thing to do is to plug in your FTDI adapter. I'm going to go ahead and plug mine in. It's been so long since I first used this adapter that the, the drivers are already installed, and I don't remember whether Windows installed the drivers automatically or whether I had to download them and install them manually. If you need to install the FTDI drivers, here is one place you can go to get them, okay? I assume that the programmer sold by Red Rotor is a standard FTDI chip and will work with these drivers. Uh, or you may just get lucky, plug it in, and Windows will just automatically start working. That would be what I would hope for if I were you. Uh, we can just confirm if we go to the device manager and we look for ports here. Here is COM5. That is the only USB serial device that's there. Okay, so COM5 is the one that we're going to want to be using. The dongle is connected, and now we will launch the RR loader shortcut and enter the port number. Here's the RR loader shortcut. Okay, let's give that a go. All right, this pops up. We want port number 5. Okay. Plug the battery into the ROSD Pro. All right, let's give that a go. And here we go. It's either working or it's failing. Take your bets. There, and it works. Oh, there you go. Okay, well, uh, that all worked out wonderfully. Uh, hopefully that is the information you need to perform this process. Uh, the places that I think you might be likely to get trip, tripped up might be your wiring, okay? Be very careful that you've got the wiring exactly as it needs to be. You must have a common ground. If you don't have a common ground between the ROSD and the PC, then it will not work. And uh, everything else just needs to be wired as shown here. I showed you how to do it. If you have a standard FTDI adapter, we've just confirmed that will work. And then the other thing is uh, you need to have the FTDI drivers installed. So you need to, when you go to your device manager, you need to see that device here, USB serial port. And again, if we look at the properties here, we can see that this is an FTDI adapter, USB serial converter. Okay, so if you plug in your FTDI adapter and you don't see this in the device manager, then obviously that's not working correctly. The next thing to do will be to test out the lap timer and see if that's working. So we'll get to that in another video. Thanks for watching. Hope it was helpful. Happy flying.